Let us meditate on Sri Ramakrishna for a few minutes and prepare the mind to understand the significance of his spiritual instructions. Om Sāpakāya Jadharmasya Sarvadharmaswarūpine Sāpakāya Jadharmasya Sarvadharmaswarūpine Avatāra Varishthāya Rāma Krishnā yate nama Asato mātad gamaya Tamaso mājyotar Asato ma sadgamaya Tamaso ma jodevamaya Mrityor ma mrithangamaya Om Shantish let us bow down to Sri Ramakrishna, the embodiment of all religions, the supreme God incarnate. Let us pray to Him to lead us from unreal to the real to lead us from darkness of ignorance to the light of knowledge, <laughs> to lead us from death to immortality. We are now studying chapter 26. Sri Ramakrishna was Telling a devotee how the mind of a worldly person is. He clearly distinguishes between the worldly mind and spiritual mind. If your spiritual life were to be successful, it follows you must have spiritual mind. Sri Ramakrishna tells the mind of a worldly person is no doubt like muddy water. But it can be made clear by purifying agent. Discrimination and renunciation are the purifying agent. See how Sri Ramakrishna is giving hope. He points out why the man is suffering and he gives the solution how to overcome that suffering. So cleaning is very essential. One has to purify oneself thoroughly without any question. Here Sri Ramakrishna clearly points out to practice discrimination and renunciation. In the last few classes, 
I was talking about reasoning leads you nowhere. Faith is most important thing in the spiritual life. That's true. But here, discrimination is not reasoning. Reasoning, it has got a specific term in Sanskrit called Tarka. Tarka. Argumentation. Go on arguing. Suppose you say something, why it so? It is like this. Why it so? It is like this. Why it so? Where is the end? The end comes only when you stop asking why is it so. That means you must stop reasoning. But discrimination is entirely different. Discrimination means vivek. Viveka. Renunciation means Tyaga, Vairagya. Well, the great Shankaracharya, in one of his commentaries on the Gita, has stated, Tavadevahi Purusho Yavadantakranam Tadiyam Karya Kari Vishay Viveka Yogyam Tadayogyatve Nashta Eva Purusho Bhavati. Shankaracharya is very clear in his thought. He is telling, as long as one retains the capacity to discriminate between right and wrong, he remains as a man. The moment he loses this capacity to discriminate between right and wrong, he ceases to be a man. So it implies that discrimination is not something to be done once in a while. It's over. Not like that. Every moment of your life, you are face to face with a choice to be good or bad, to be happy or unhappy, to remember God or forget Him. One wrong decision one false assumption, one careless step is sometimes enough to ruin one's career or peace of mind for the rest of his life. Only one careless act. There are so many Episodes, how by careless acts people get into trouble. Some find perpetually lodged on the horns of dilemma. They can't decide what is right, what is wrong. Even if somebody tells, they have no guts to hold on to that idea. Then what is the fate of such people? It is utterly miserable. So, what Sri Ramakrishna says that in spiritual life discrimination is very essential. You must know that spiritual life is an adventure 
into the unknown. You have not seen God, but you are pursuing it. So, in order to go in spiritual path, you need the lamp of discrimination to find your way towards your spiritual illumination. Probably you might have studied Lord Buddha's life. His last advice to his disciples was Atma Deepo Bhava Be a lamp unto yourself. That was the message of Lord Buddha to his disciple. The last message. Once a young man who was inclined to the practice of Jnana Yoga joined the Ramakrishna mission As soon as he joined, you know, the first thing would be to give him, to engage him totally in work, whole time, whole being must be involved in the work of the mission. Atmano moksha jagad hitaya cha. You have to purify thoroughly by working. All your angularities must be brushed up. So, this particular young man was engaged in a lot of work. So he found he was not finding much time for his spiritual practice. So he approached this Swami in charge and he told him that he needed six hours a day to practice self-analysis. Six hours a day he needs for self-analysis. The Swami replied, why only six hours? You are expected to practice self-analysis all the 24 hours. That is exactly true. That is called discrimination. That is called Viveka, not Tharka. I already told you, reasoning is different by Viveka, Vichara. Viveka is different from Tarka. It means that a spiritual aspirant who really takes up this life in order to achieve the spiritual goal, he has to be alert and discriminating. It's no doubt difficult. It is like keeping a lamp burning in a windy place. Immediately the lamp is put off by the wind. So the wind of worldly desires is constantly blowing and every time the flame of knowledge flickers out, you will have to light it again. If you don't do it, you have to remain in darkness. Swami Adbhutananda Ji, one of the direct disciples of Sri Ramakrishna, he used to say, to keep the lamp of Viveka constantly burning 
He is greatest tapas. It is the greatest austerity. Now you will understand the significance of Viveka if you think a bit about its opposite. The opposite of Viveka is called Pramada. Inadvertence. Carelessness. It is one of the characteristics of tamas. Lord Krishna says in the Gita, Satvam Sukhe Sanjayati Rajaha Karmani Bharata Jnana Mavrityatu Tamaha Pramade Sanjayatyudha Satva attaches one to happiness. Rajas to action. A man with rajasic quality loves to be active all the time. Even in sleep he will be working. Whereas the tamas clouds discrimination and creates negligence. Shankaracharya again says in his Viveka Chudamani, the crust jewel of discrimination. If you have not read, please read that book. We are all students of Vedanta. It is a very important spiritual textbook Vivek Chudamani by Shankaracharya. There the Acharya says carelessness is death itself. Lakshyat Chutam Chedyad Chittamishad Bahir Mukham Sannipate Tatastataha Pramadataha Prachuta Keli Kandukaha Sopana Pangtu Padito Yathatataha I am just, I know you don't understand Sanskrit, but still I am chanting just to, at least you can enjoy the beauty of the words, this idea. But every word is so pregnant with idea. It is so important. It is so beautiful to think about. Here, the meaning of this verse which I just now chanted is, if the mind strays from the ideal, even a little, and becomes outgoing, then it goes down and down, just as a play ball, carelessly dropped on the staircase, comes down bouncing from one step to another. The mind that is attached to the things of the world reflects on their qualities. Deep reflections give rise to desire. And after desiring, one sets about having that thing. That means through inadvertence, one deviates from his real nature. Once he deviated from the spiritual ideal, thereafter he falls. He falls. The fallen one invariably comes to ruin but is never seen to rise up again. Now, it is important to know what true discrimination is. I am dealing with this subject in an exhaustive way. At least those who come to the Tuesday class are considered serious students of Vedanta. 
they have taken spiritual life seriously and they are practicing sincerely honestly so it's very important that some of these important characteristics of spiritual life are to be known every kind of reasoning or cogitation is not discrimination doubting vacillation and shilly shallying often bear the semblance of discrimination but they are not discrimination true discrimination is a process by which the mind makes correct value judgments and arrives at right conclusions there are three points which distinguish vivek from ordinary thinking and reasoning one is shraddha faith in the superiority of the virtue and the primacy of the spirit discrimination is always a movement from a lower value to a higher value from wise to virtue from matter to spirit and this movement is possible only if the aspirant has an unshakable shraddha faith in the higher value we have talked enough of shraddha in previous classes one who has no faith in virtue cannot practice discrimination between virtue and vice for him vice appears to be the only logical course of action secondly discrimination is possible only when both the objects of discrimination are known discrimination is not airy speculation it's a movement between two known poles of experience in order to know that what you saw in the dark was not a snake but a rope you must see the rope here comes the importance of the scripture and the teacher discrimination must always be based on true knowledge gained either from direct experience or from these two sources scriptures and the teacher thirdly discrimination is not just a movement of thought it is a process of determining the right choice fixing the right end and means this determination is a function of buddhi intellect according to hindu psychology buddhi is both the faculty of intuition and the faculty of will discrimination always involves the operation of both these faculties in ordinary thinking buddhi rarely comes into operation it comes forward only when the soul is at a crossroads and a vital decision has to be made so true discrimination is the continual exercise of buddhi
the Bhagavad Gita classifies buddhi, the discriminating faculty, into three categories sattvic, rajasic, and tamasic. That buddhi is called sattvic, which knows the distinction between action and inaction, what ought to be done and what ought not to be done, what is to be feared and what is not to be feared, what is bondage and what is liberation. All these come under Sattvic Buddhi. Rajasic Buddhi is unable to determine clearly what is virtue and vice, what is action and inaction. Tamasic Buddhi is enveloped in darkness. It mistakes vice for virtue and takes a perverted view of everything. Pravrittincha nivrittincha karya karya bhaya bhaya pandham mokshan jaya veti buddhisa partha sattviki Eya dharma madarman cha karyan cha karya meva cha ayatha vat prajanati buddhisa partha rajasi adharmam dharma midiya manyate tamasa avrata sarvartan vibritam cha buddhisa partha tamasi These are the three verses where Lord Krishna clearly states Sattvic, Rajasic and Tamasic Buddhi. Evidently, it is only the Sattvic Buddhi that can exercise proper discrimination. The Buddhi becomes Sattvic when the mind is pure. Impurity Egoism and ignorance make it rajasic and tamasic. In spiritual discipline, the spiritual masters always say to practice brahmacharya continence, which is very difficult, more difficult nowadays. The main purpose of observing continence is to develop sattvic buddhi. In a continent person, the buddhi remains clear and luminous and he learns many spiritual truths. An incontinent person finds his buddhi clouded and he is unable to practice higher forms of discrimination. Another name for uh, sattvic buddhi is dhi, d-h-e-e, dhi. Dhyo yo na prachodayat. The famous mantra in the Veda, Gayatri mantra. Tatsa viduru vare enyam bhargo devasya dhimai. Dhyo yo na prachodayat. So the famous Gayatri mantra of the Vedas is a powerful prayer for the awakening of dhi which normally remains dormant in the vast majority of people. Discrimination operates at different planes of existence depending upon the level of consciousness and the objects involved it may be classified into four different types. Four different types of discrimination. One is called Karya Karya Viveka. Second one Nitya Nistya Vastu Viveka. Third one Dhrigdrasya Viveka. 
ఫోర్త్ వన్ సహసద్వస్తు వివేక దెర్ ఆల్ స్పెసిఫిక్ సైన్స్క్రిప్ టర్మ్స్ వెరీ థరోలీ క్లారిఫైడ్ అబౌట్ ది డిస్క్రిమినేషన్ విచ్ విల్ టేక్ వన్ బై వన్ ఫస్ట్ ఇస్ కార్యాకార్య వివేక కార్య అకార్య వివేక దట్ ఈస్ ద డిస్క్రిమినేషన్ బిట్వీన్ వాట్ ఆట్ టు బి డన్ అండ్ వాట్ ఆట్ నాట్ టు బి డన్ ఇన్ ద కోర్స్ ఆఫ్ అవర్ డైలీ యాక్టివిటీస్ innumerable paths open before us and time and again we have to decide which path to follow our success and happiness depend upon the right choice this is however not an easy task mere common sense alone is not enough to take important decisions in life so called common sense is often tainted by one's desires and past tendencies and life is too serious a matter to be left to it one has to practice careful discrimination between what ought to be done and what ought not to be done there are two guiding principles which are of great help in determining the right course of action two guiding principles one is sukha dukha viveka discrimination between happiness and sorrow this may appear to be an easy thing to do because it is a natural tendency of all beings to avoid pain and seek happiness the difficulty arises only when we find that what we had mistaken for happiness often leads us to sorrow therefore we should know what true happiness is if you go wrong there the whole thing will be wrong i did not know sir will not help you in katopanishad is a very famous upanishad from vivekananda said many times read kata upanishad there is a story of nachiketas a young brahmachari full of tejas it's a big story anyway he came in contact with uh, god of death yama himself yama is the name of god god of death so but the god of death wanted to test him initially he wanted to see whether the boy has right type of discrimination so he wanted to put him into test so he tempted him with various celestial pleasures oh boy you are just a young man you look very well why not you enjoy enjoy well this is not the time to think of what is atman etc this is the time for you to enjoy that's how all our people talk about you go and talk to any young man <laughs> he wants to enjoy nothing beyond enjoyment 
So, he offered all types of pleasures. Come on, take anything you want. He meant. He's not simply telling. He can do, he can give whatever he wanted. Right now I give you. Not only that, you can live as many years as you want to enjoy the things. That also I will grant you. Not simply hundred years old. It may be too short for you to enjoy the life. Alright? Enjoy immensely. I will give you a lot of span of life. Thousand years. But the boy was very shrewd. And he was very careful. As I said, how he became so careful, how his buddhi was so sharp, because of his continued practice of continence. Well versed in the scriptures. So his mind was well set. He doesn't want to lower the mind even a bit. So, straight away he rejected them all. Now, I don't want all these things. Keep away. Keep all these things with you, sir. Keep all these damsels, this uh, celestial joy, pleasure, so on. Keep everything to yourself. I don't want any of these things. That means, he was well established in discrimination and he was well established in renunciation. He doesn't want anything. He wanted only the knowledge of the Self. He wanted only truth. Anyway, the details are in the Upanishad. If you want to study details, you can study that book. So, the boy rejected them all on the ground that they were transitory. They wear out the power of the senses. The more you enjoy, the more your senses become weak, exhausted. And you lose all the power you have. Commenting on this episode, the Upanishad says, Shreyas and Prayas, in fact the same two words I was talking today morning with one of our friends, <laughs> Shreyas and Prayas. Shreyas means good, Prayas means pleasant. They both come to you. Nicely, they present before, they stand before you. Good and pleasant, what do you want? Do you want good or do you want pleasant? The wise one examines both, distinguishes the one from the other and chooses the good. If you choose the good, the end result will be good. If you choose the pleasant, the end result will be miserable. So those who are not wise enough, they are driven by fleshy desires. They prefer the pleasant to the good. They think Shreyas is the only way. We have come to this world to enjoy. What is they are talking about? We, don't, we should not enjoy at all. Does this mean that there is no happiness in the good according to these people who choose the pleasant? The truth is that happiness is of different types of which the lowest 
is Vishya Sukha or sense pleasure. The sense pleasure, it is classified under Rajasika Sukh. In Gita, again, this classification is explained. It also mentions a still lower type of happiness, Tamasik Sukh, which arises from sleep, indolence. You get some kind of happiness by sleeping too. It is classified as Tamasik. Higher than this is Shama Sukham. Shama. Shama means self-control. Shama Sukham means the joy of self-control. If you are controlling yourself, in the very process of your controlling, you feel immensely joyful. It's a joy to have control. Higher still is Atma Sukham, the joy of realizing the Atman. According to the Gita, these two types of happiness, Shama Sukham, Atma Sukham, are Sattvic. But there is still higher than these two. The highest form of happiness is the infinite and everlasting bliss of Brahman, known as Brahmananda. Brahmananda. That is the highest form of happiness. So, we have thus different types of happiness before us. It means how important it is that we should be thorough, discriminative. That's why Sri Ramakrishna says discrimination and renunciation are very essential in your spiritual journey. So I conclude my talk. There are a lot of things to know about discrimination which I would continue in my next class. Page 506 Master said, the important thing is somehow to cultivate devotion to God and love for Him. What's the use of knowing many things? Is enough food to cultivate love of God by following any of the paths? What, when you have this love, you are sure to attain God. Afterwards, if it is necessary, God will explain everything to you and tell you about the other paths as well. It is enough for you to develop love of God. You have no need of many opinions and discussions. You have come to the orchard to eat mangoes, enjoy them to your heart's content. You don't need to count the branches and leaves on the trees. It is wise to follow the attitude of Hanuman. I don't know the day of the week, the phase of the moon or the position of the stars. I only contemplate Rama. Master Mahesh has said, I now desire that my activities may be much reduced and that I may devote myself greatly to God. Presently, Ram Chattaji entered the room. The Master said some kind words about him to other. Master said, Ram's presence in the temple garden has relieved us of many anxieties. He searches out Harish, Latu and the others at meal time. Very often they are absorbed in meditation in some corner of the temple garden. It is Ram who sees that they eat at the proper time. Yeah. Any questions to ask, you are welcome. Any comments or discussions, observance? Start. If once you start, then everybody will start. 
starting trouble <laughs> so be prepared to practice discrimination because you're all aspiring for results you know people want results true but you will get result provided you follow the instructions clearly the instructions given by shri ramakrishna himself discrimination renunciation many points are there which you have to understand and practice in your life small small things will make us upset and lose our balance how can you expect spiritual progress in life that only shows our ego has become more and more strong more and more sensitive more and more intolerable that's not a good sign person who follows spirituality must be free from such reactions they may come on account of so many other factors but we should not get into such a state of being hurt no that is too much don't get hurt so to be like that you require strength that strength is spiritual strength that strength comes through your proper discrimination that's all don't yield to circumstances don't yield don't become victims to surroundings be on guard on yourself everything will be all right when you have taken shri ram krishna's name there is nothing to fear sometimes things come to test us just as the god of death tested nachiketas we also have to pass through lot of tests before we come face to face with god anyway nothing to worry no hurry no worry thank you all chant the name of the lord and his glory unceasingly that the mirror of the heart may be wiped clean and quench that mighty forest fire worldly lust raging furiously within o name stream down in moonlight on the lotus heart opening its cup to knowledge of thyself o self drowned deep in the waves of his bliss tasting his nectar at every step bathing in his name that bought for weary souls various are thy names o lord in each and every name thy power resides no times are set no rites are needful for chanting of thy name so vast is thy mercy how huge then is my wretchedness we find in this empty life and heart no devotion to thy name o oh, my mind be humbler than a blade of grass be patient and forbearing like a tree take no honor to thyself give honor to all chant unceasingly the name of the lord o lord and soul of the universe mine is no prayer for wealth or retinue the playthings of lust or the toys of fame as many times as i may be reborn grant me o lord a steadfast love for thee a drowning man in this world's fearful ocean is thy servant o sweet one in thy mercy consider him as dust beneath thy feet 
Oh, how I long for the day when an instant's separation from Thee, O Lord, will be as a thousand years, when my heart burns away with its desire, and the world without Thee is a heartless void. Prostrate at Thy feet let me be, in unwavering devotion, neither imploring the embrace of Thine arms, nor bewailing the withdrawal of Thy presence, though it tears my soul asunder. O Thou, who stillest the hearts of Thy devotees, do with me what Thou wilt, for Thou art my heart's beloved, Thou and Thou alone. O Lord, lead us from the unreal to the real, lead us from darkness to light, and lead us from death to immortality. May all be free from dangers, may all realize what is good, may all be actuated by noble thoughts, may all rejoice everywhere. May all be happy, may all be free from disease, may all realize what is good, may none be subject to misery. May the wicked become virtuous, may the virtuous attain tranquility, may the tranquil be free from bonds, may the freed make others free. May good betide all people, may the sovereign righteously rule the earth, may all beings ever attain what is good, may the worlds be prosperous and happy. May the clouds pour rain in time, may the earth be blessed with crops, may all countries be freed from calamity, may holy men live without fear. May the Lord, the destroyer of sins, the presiding deity of all sacred works be satisfied, for he being pleased the whole universe becomes pleased, he being satisfied, the whole universe feels satisfied.